What's going on, everybody? This is your WOF Outlook and Discussion for Friday, June 2nd, 2023. And before we get into today's video, I hope everyone is doing well, remaining positive, and is always staying blessed. All right, you guys, this morning, taking a look here at the Eastern Gulf of Mexico, we still have our disorganized tropical depression number two here that is slowly moving, drifting to the south here. And that motion, that forward motion should continue with an increase in forward speed as we head on throughout the day today and into tomorrow with dissipation forecast around the Northwest Cuba coast here by sometime on Saturday, you guys. Now, as we take a look at the latest advisory, which is at which was at 4 a.m., you guys, the next one will be coming out in about one more hour, which I will have that update here posted on at your web on the fly. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date and get all of the updates as the National Hurricane Center releases them, you guys. But as of 4 a.m., you guys, the center of tropical depression two was located near 27 North. 86.5 west that's about 285 miles west of fort myers florida and about 365 miles north northwest of the western tip of cuba where it is forecast to dissipate you guys maximum sustained winds were at 35 miles per hour as of 4 a.m the present movement was south at about five miles per hour with a minimum central pressure of about a thousand seven millibars so the pressure hasn't really been falling you guys so Really, no strengthening has been going on with this system. No coastal watches or warnings in effect as this system is not expected to make landfall, you guys. And as I said earlier, and as I just said a few seconds ago, weakening is expected to begin later today, tonight, and the system is forecast to degenerate into a remnant low on Saturday, you guys. Other than that, impacts for Florida, Florida could see some heavy rainfall, you guys, maybe some isolated instances of flash flooding but it shouldn't be nothing too much that you guys cannot handle as the system should remain well offshore of the west coast of the Florida Peninsula, you guys. All right, and I was gonna try to pull up the discussion to see it, you guys. Let's see if it pulls it up. All right, here we go, you guys. This is the National Hurricane Center's latest discussion as of 4 a.m. on the system. Let me see before I do that. Let's see, we'll take... I'm going to put a new, we're going to do the water vapor imagery, you guys. I want to show you guys the water vapor imagery. All right, you guys. And as we look at the discussion, read the um, latest discussion, the tropical cyclone has not become better organized this morning and remains in a shared state, you guys, as you can see with all this dry air. And then look at this um, westerly wind shear, you guys, which I'm going to show you guys another map here of that westerly wind shear, northwesterly wind shear that's going to be, that's not, I'm not going to say going to be, that is affecting the Gulf of Mexico and will be affecting this system here within the next six to 12 hours, you guys. The National Hurricane Center said, despite its unimpressive appearance earlier, data indicates that the cyclone was close to tropical storm strength, you guys. So, it's getting there, you guys. It may briefly become Tropical Storm Arlene. It's going to be one of them instances where it may actually become Arlene for one or two advisories, and then you might have some people saying, oh, they wasted the name. But at the end of the day, if the storm met the criteria, even if it was just for one, two hours, that means it met the criteria and should be named. That would be just like saying... All right, if a storm was not to make landfall and was to hurry up, ramp up to a category four, then drop back down to a remnant low in two hours, will that be wasting the name? I have no idea, but you guys, we're going to keep it going. No need to um dwell on that. So let's see what the National Hurricane Center says. All right, it appears that the window of opportunity for the cyclone to strengthen is closing or has already closed. The vertical shear is likely to remain strong or become even stronger as the system continues to move to the south, you guys. So as we move on into today and go into tomorrow, you guys, we should start to see the system look a little more diffused and just coming, de decoupling, coming apart completely as the shear gets to it, you guys. And as I take the water vapor off, I wanna show you guys real quickly the forecast shear. This would be in the 500 millibars so around the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere, you guys, 
look at the look at the shear already you guys look at the whole western and central gulf of mexico is just about engulfed in this strong westerly wind shear you guys and it's very much getting very close to the center of the storm you guys as you can see here so it's not going to be long before this system actually starts to feel the effects of this wind shear and these thunderstorms start to become even more sheared away from the center blown away and start to weaken you guys as we take a look at the forecast track here the official forecast track let me take the mesoscale off real quick here you guys you can see let's do the wind radii all right you guys as you can see here the storm doesn't have much longer just about one two just about another two three more advisors you guys and once it gets to the western tip of the um northwest cuba coast here that's going to be it this system will no longer be you guys so we won't have too much longer to deal with it if you look at the forecast models you can see the models are just about in fair good agreement of taking this the, um low to the south and southeast and then whatever remnant energy is left it'll be shunted off to the east and then northeast out into this main strong southwesterly flow and shear that we have in the rest of the tropical atlantic which as you can see you guys nothing else is expected to develop anytime soon we do have some of some showers and thunderstorms a few tropical waves here along the intertropical conversion zone and look even here across parts of the central caribbean here you guys look at this blow up of convection here but as of right now upper level winds are not favorable you guys you're going to take one more look here at tropical depression too courtesy of tropical tibbets you guys here's another look at the visible high resolution visible satellite imagery and as you can see the center is just drifting to the south here very slowly center probably located about 27 north and about 86.1 west you guys and drifting to the south and that's this motion should continue you guys as we move on through the day now we're going to get back to the lower 48 you guys as we do have some severe weather today we're going to have some very nasty storms more than likely forming here across parts of the southern plains yet again as the southern plains cannot seem to get a break all right you guys let me make sure i have everything off all right let me take this off all right you guys and as you can see convective outlook day one the storm prediction center does have an enhanced risk here for west texas this does include lubbock midland odessa Snyder, Abilene, San Angelo, um, extending on up towards Talia, Talia and Childress. All these areas are under an enhanced risk, you guys. So we will definitely be on the lookout for some very nasty weather today across western Texas. Amarillo is un, is in a slight risk, and that slight risk does extend as far north as parts of the um, central Oklahoma's Panhandle and extreme southwest Oklahoma. You have the marginal risk that extends all the way up into north, um, western Nebraska. Does include Garden City, Kansas, Oklahoma City is in that marginal risk, you guys. And as we check the probability to see just what these storms will be doing today, we have a 5% chance of a spin up of a few tornadoes here across parts of West Texas. We will be on the lookout for that across that enhanced risk and a 2% chance encompassing a slight risk, you guys. Hell, we have a 30% chance of hell pushing one to one and a half inch in diameter and across the enhanced risk, a 15% chance across the slight risk, and a 5% encompassing the marginal risk that does extend all the way up into parts of western Nebraska. The wind probability, the same as the hell, a 30% chance across parts of the western western Texas and getting into parts of the panhandle there, a 15% chance of those winds pushing 50 to 60 gusts in the 70 across the slight risk and that does extend into parts of oklahoma southwest oklahoma and that five percent chance of those gusty winds does extend all the way up into parts of western nebraska even eastern colorado you guys no significant tornadoes are expected that is good news we do have a hatched area for hell here which does extend into parts of extreme eastern new mexico hell will be on the order of two maybe even up to three inches in diameter we will have a significant wind event here across parts of West Texas as well with winds could, that can be pushing as high as 80 miles per hour. The normal is going to be 50 to 60 gusts in the 70, but when we have a significant wind event, 
they can be pushing as high as 80 miles per hour, you guys. So we'll definitely be on the lookout today across parts of the southern high plains. And as we look at the HRRR, you guys will see just how these storms are going to materialize throughout the next 48 hours here across the U.S. All right, get this to load. All right, you guys, we're going to start here at 12 o'clock. All right, you guys, and as you can see, we have our system here, Tropical Depression 2, over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, which will be um, funneling in some showers and thunderstorms here across parts of the Florida's peninsula here, but not too much of an impact, but it will be something. We'll be on the lookout for um, some possible flash flooding there later on, you guys. Here across parts of the western United States, Montana, we're going to have to look out for some very heavy rainfall. Some flash flooding will more than likely be possible here across that area and even parts of the western, parts of West Texas. And I will show you guys the excessive rainfall outlook after we finish the HRRR model. As we go on to about 4 o'clock, you guys. All right, let's see. You can see here by the time we get to 4 o'clock, look at all the showers and thunderstorms here across Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, you guys. It's going to be very wet here across parts of the west and the Rockies here. As we go on to look here across parts of the Texas pan, all the way from the Oklahoma, Texas panhandle, all the way down to the Texas-Mexico border, look at these cells. These cells are, look very strong and will be capable of producing a few tornadoes here. You guys, with some very damaging hail and damaging winds. We move on to about 8, 9 in the evening. You can see here these strong showers and thunderstorms continuing here across parts of the um, Texas Panhandle, now starting to move towards the eastern Texas Panhandle into western Oklahoma with strong sails um, extending all the way as far north as western Nebraska and northeast Colorado, where we could see some hail and damaging wind gusts there as well. We move into the overnight hours, 2 a.m. You can see the showers and thunderstorms starts to move on into parts of Oklahoma, even central Oklahoma. The Oklahoma City area could be experiencing some heavy rain here as we head into the overnight hours and it even extending on up into parts of Montana again here, you guys, throughout the night could have some showers and a rumble of thunder. Here we have our tropical depression too, continuing to drift to the south and weakening as it does so. We get to 7 a.m., which does segue us to convective outlook day two. And as you can see, convective outlook day two just have a marginal risk here for eastern New for um, eastern New Mexico and western and getting into central and parts of East Texas here, which as you can see, Dallas is going to be in this marginal risk for severe weather. Tomorrow, you guys, Abilene, Midland, extending on just to the north of Waco, you guys, getting on into Roswell, Mexico, Clovis, you guys. All these areas will be on their marginal risk for Saturday as we check to see what these storms will possibly, possibly be doing here, you guys. No tornadoes are expected as of right now. That is good news. We have the 5% chance of hail across that marginal risk, one to one and a half inch in diameter. And as well as the winds pushing 50 to 60 gusts into 70 in this area for tomorrow, you guys. And as we continue to H triple R out, here's about the noon hour on Saturday, you guys. All right, and as you can see, look here across parts of northeast Colorado, the Denver area could have a cluster of showers, maybe a rumble of thunder or so heading throughout that throughout the afternoon on saturday there you guys and look across parts of north texas northwest texas here these cells are starting to pop isolated hail and damaging winds will be possible we will have our shower and thunderstorm threat here across parts of the florida peninsula as this system continues to weaken and drop into into the northwest tip of cuba and that energy is going to slide eastward across the florida peninsula and into the atlantic you guys we move on to about four or five in the afternoon on tomorrow, on Saturday. And let's see, you guys, and look here. Look at all the scatter showers again across the western United States, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona. All these areas, showers and thunderstorms will be ongoing. Even extent, Minnesota could have some showers, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, all these areas, then extending, coming on down 
towards eastern Oklahoma. Look at these cells extending into parts of western central Arkansas, extending on down to the Arklatex, even across Louisiana, south Louisiana, south Mississippi, Alabama. All these areas could have some showers and thunderstorms going on tomorrow afternoon with the daytime heating. And across parts of Texas here, you can see these cells starting to pop. These look like some strong cells. I will not be surprised if this is upgraded to a slight risk at some point by tomorrow, you guys. And as we continue to age triple R out as far as it will go, which will be 1 a.m. on Sunday morning, you guys, you can see, look at the heavy cluster of showers and the thunderstorm that's going to be tucked in here across parts of the hill country here in Texas. And as that continues to move on out to the east and possibly southeast here, it's going to probably continue to die off as the night progresses, you guys, as that moves through Texas. That's as far as the HRRR takes us out, you guys. And before we go, I want to take that off, take the convective outlook off. I want to show you guys the excessive rainfall outlook for today. And as you can see, we do have a... A moderate risk here across parts of the northeast here. We may have a few showers and thunderstorms, possibly with this coastal low that we have off of the mid-Atlantic here, you guys. Across parts of the southern Florida's peninsula, we do have a risk for some um, isolated flash flooding, you guys. But look here across parts of Montana and the Texas Panhandle. This is what I wanted to show you guys, this moderate risk here for some excessive rainfall. So flash flooding will be likely and in store you guys today for some of you for some of the areas here across the united states so if you haven't done so already you guys be sure to share like and subscribe so you all can stay up to date and weather aware the next advisory for tropical depression 2 should be coming out in about another 30 to 45 minutes i will have that posted here at your weather on the fly so everyone be safe be careful and i'll talk to you all in the next one